I hope you don't feel seasick as we the uh, Mediterranean. Uh, this is a very brief summary of the last two chapters of Acts. Uh, I encourage you to read uh, chapters 27 and 28 for yourselves, or maybe even try the Bible study that got sent out this morning. Thanks, Nathan. And um, uh, we're going to follow Paul across the sea, but um, the reflection is more to do with, you know, are there any lessons uh, for our own journey, if you like, of, of faith? So um, what have we been doing the last few weeks? Well, we've followed Paul uh, on uh, three uh, missionary journeys, haven't we, around the Mediterranean. So you're probably familiar with some of the geography here. Today we join him and his companions on the fourth journey um, from Caesarea here on the coast here, Caesarea, all the way to, to Rome up here in, in the middle of Italy. And um, I was just thinking we are all on a, on a journey of faith, of life, hopes, fears, ups and downs. And um, maybe for you, there may be some aspects of Paul's journey that you can identify with. Um, and, uh, you know, it may just be a, a way for you to think about how your good father has been sustaining you or how he will sustain you and carry you through the rest of your, your spiritual journey. Good. So um, I'm going to call the first leg of this journey, I'm going to call it plain sailing, plain sailing. So what happened uh, um, back in Caesarea is a Roman centurion, his name is Julius, he commandeered a coastal trading vessel for his prisoners. And uh, Julius allowed Paul um, time to meet some of his friends in Sidon here, um, which is on the coast of Lebanon, or what is now Lebanon. Um, he, he allowed Paul to stop off and, and meet some friends on the way. So here we are, we're, we're in familiar waters, um, easy traveling, um, pottering up the coast in the comfort zone. Uh, although Paul's a prisoner, um, he's with his friends, he's got Christian fellowship. Um, Julius is, is, is um, uh, showing him kindness. Uh, Paul's being cared for. So this is, uh, this is a comfortable part of what will become a difficult journey. And how about us? Do we have phases when we're going through life and it's all plain sailing? Um, we're perhaps freewheeling, perhaps we lose a little bit of that uh, edge of discipline in our lives. Um, and when there's not so much challenge, um, there may be not so much opportunity for, for growth and development. So um, plain sailing is all well and good, uh, but, uh, but we do need to keep our, our uh, wits about us as, uh, as Christians and uh, to, to keep our spiritual disciplines um, together. And then the next leg of the journey um, uh, uh, is uh, from Sidon and uh, up around here. Um, so the journey continues along the south coast of what is now Turkey. Julius transfers his prisoner, prisoners to a bigger ship that's capable of sailing across the sea. But the wind direction is unfavourable, so progress was slow. And uh, the ship um, temporarily stopped off uh, in a, in a harbour on the south coast of Crete. So we've made our way slowly against the wind, uh, travelling uh, west underneath um, Turkey and into the middle of the sea. And how about when you, uh, in your Christian walk, are kind of sailing against the wind a bit? What about when you meet resistance or when you have to take detours unexpectedly? You might have to change your plans in life. You may feel you're making slow progress and life can be difficult. So how do you cope with that? Well, with, with the help of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, um, you, you become a bit more focused. Uh, you, you have to make decisions. Um, you suffer some stress. Um, and they say that when the tough gets going, or when the going gets tough, the, the tough get going. Are you, are you one of those people uh, that when the going gets tough, you get going? Um, it can be uh, that a certain amount of stress can be good for us. But then again, if we're not uh, confident in our faith, that may shake us quite a lot. So part of your journey may have included over the years this sailing against the wind where things don't really seem to be going right for you. So we're on the south coast of Crete and um, uh, Paul 
uh, was uh, just as aware of the risks of continuing the journey as the centurion, uh, the pilot, and the owner of the ship. So we've got Julius the centurion, and then two other characters, uh, the pilot and the owner. And they, they all four of them are experienced um, uh, seafaring people. They've been on ships before. Um, and Paul warns them and says, I don't think we should carry on. I think the weather's going to be too bad. Um, but Paul was outnumbered three to one. And the decision was made to cast off and take their chances in the open sea. So here we're going to start traveling uh, uh, further west um, beyond um, Crete. And um, what, do, what is it like for us when we see danger on the horizon? What's it like for us when, when we're in discussion with people about what to do and there's conflict and differences of opinion? What's it like for us to be uh, launched off into a, a way out of our comfort zone, uh, taking risks? Um, how, how, how risk averse are you? Are you one to stay at home, stay put, stay safe? Are you one to... Uh, launch out, take chances, and uh, embrace risk. Um, uh, Jesus certainly embraced risk, and um, he encouraged his disciples to do so. But uh, uh, have you been, or would you like to be, in a in a in a phase of life where where the prediction is looks like difficult times ahead, but you press on anyway? Where are we up to? Ah, oh, the storms of life. Okay. Now, things start to get even more scary. Um, you know, sailing ships, they, they can control their course to a certain extent and with the right technique uh, can sail into the wind. But a gale so forceful came upon this ship uh, that the crew had no choice to be, but to be carried along in order to lighten the ship, to make it easier to manoeuvre and to reduce the chance of sinking. The crew threw all but the essential equipment overboard. And what's this like for us? We sometimes compare tragedies and difficult times with storms, don't we? And uh, we pray for, for, our, for our Lord Jesus who calms the storms to come alongside us and uh, command the, the sort of spiritual waves and winds to, to cease. But uh, they are difficult times when we lose control. It feels as if we're being driven along by, by forces uh, that, uh, that we can't uh, influence. We might take like this ship, we might take a violent battering um, in our lives and, 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 and end up losing um, resources, material things or, or, or family members or, you know, the, our, our capital that we carry through our life. We may lose through these tragic times and, and we may give up hope. Um, so the storms of life will come as they did uh, in this story of, of Paul's journey to Rome. But then... God breaks through in those storms of life, doesn't he? So here, um, uh, even though the crew are in danger, Paul tells the, the crew and the passengers, I told you so, you know, we shouldn't have done this journey. But then he shares a word uh, that he uh, received in the night from an angel. Uh, an angel came and said, do not be afraid, and gives encouragement to Paul, which he then passes on to the 276 people on board this ship that's creaking and, and starting to break at the seams. And, um, and Paul encourages uh, uh, everyone with him uh, that they'll all survive. So here, even though you're coming through a storm, God will bring his encouragement to you. He's the storm calmer. He's the one who brings that message so many times through scripture, fear not, do not be afraid. And um, uh, eventually, um, uh, Paul and his companions uh, end up uh, in, a, in a shipwreck. What happened is the ship ran aground in shallow waters off the island of Malta. Here we are, his Malta. Um, and it fell apart. But somehow the, all the passengers and the crew and the prisoners, everyone, they were ab either able to swim ashore or kind of bodyboard ashore on bits of wood. Uh, and eventually everyone arrived on Malta all safe. So, phew, we're, 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 uh, we're out of the water, we're beyond uh, danger, and uh, here we are, washed up on a beach. And uh, that might be what, what's like for you. Uh, you. Has your life at, at some stage fallen apart, you know, where everything, uh, you lose everything, everything around you, you're, if you like, drowning in your circumstances. And, um, but here God 
uh, is gracious and, uh, and and he helps us to uh, to survive. Uh, and, and here's Paul and his crew washed up on the beach of Malta. And, and our gracious God uh, will, will help us even, even when life throws these uh, curveballs at us. Um, uh, uh, what happened next is that uh, the people of Malta, they showed Paul and, his, and all the fellow, his fellow prisoners, they showed um, them unusual kindness, it says. They were very hospitable. They provide, provided warmth and food and shelter. And I remember um, when I uh, used to go walking in the hills up in Scotland, uh, doing uh, sort of mountaineering courses and things. I used to remember all the teaching about hypothermia, about how the, the uh, about being um, uh, cold, wet, hungry and tired, put you at risk of, of getting hypothermia. And I'm sure all these people who were exhausted from the shipwreck and the and the swim ashore were all cold, wet, hungry, and tired. But here comes the grace of God through the Maltese people uh, to provide the uh, the means by which they could become warm, dry, fed, and rested. Uh, so we're going to leave Luke and his companions uh, recovering from their ordeal. There's a bit more of the journey to go, but uh, time's running out. So I'll, I'll encourage you to to read. Um, for yourself the uh, the next uh, leg of the journey in a brand new ship uh, that took them eventually up um, uh, to the coast here and then a kind of a land journey up to Rome where where Paul spent a couple of years uh, teaching and preaching and ministering uh, to people and if you do if you would like to read a little bit of Old Testament um, uh, just to encourage you this is just a bit of homework for, for you I found this psalm, Psalm 107, was uh, very, very helpful to, again, to think about the spiritual aspects of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, of journeying and choices and when things go wrong in life and how God sustains us and comes along behind us. So I'll just finish with a brief um, prayer. Father God, thank you so much um, for this story of Paul and the way in which um, uh, you sustained him. Uh, you cared for him and his companions and even though they were against the wind even though they went through a storm even though there was a complete shipwreck uh, you helped them and you you encouraged them and you eventually brought them uh, to the place that you had in store and uh, we thank you that you do that for us thank you for the journey that we're on and we pray uh, that for the various stages that we go through that you would be for that faithful gracious God and help us in our times of need in Jesus name. Amen.